Musa. So tonight's topic is called Marriage is Honorable. That's tonight's topic. Okay, let's open up with the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. Pay attention, take notes. All right. Come on. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Read. Right. Marriage is honorable in all, mm -hmm. and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So now this is the apostle Paul speaking here to the Hebrews. Okay, he's saying marriage is honorable in all. Meaning everything that has to do with marriage, God says is honorable. Today, when you look at the conditions of our people, when you look at the black family, marriage is dishonored in the minds of our people. That's why we don't get married. You understand? There's baby mamas, baby daddy, single parent households, broken families. Why? Because we don't honor marriage no more as we were supposed to, as we are supposed to, as it was commanded us from the days of old. Read again, verse 4. Come on. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all, mm -hmm. and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So today, when you see the evidence of the evidence of homongers and adulterers, God will judge. You see the conditions of the black man and the black woman. You understand? Because you see that as a nation, homongering is going on rampant in the black community. You understand? Adultery rampant in the book in the black community. That's why today we have broken families. Why? Because marriage is no longer honorable in the sight of the black man and the black woman. The black family, the 12 tribes of Israel. So as we come into this truth, the most high God is teaching us we must get married. We must teach all, we must teach marriage and we must honor marriage. You understand? Boyfriend and girlfriend is dishonorable in the sight of the most high. Why is he saying marriage is honorable? I want to deal with that. Okay. Watch this. Give me the book of Job 22, verse 8. Job 22, verse 8. We're going to go back in the past now. Okay. Job 22, verse 8. Why is marriage honorable? Watch this. Job 22, verse 8. Go ahead. But as for the mighty man, mm -hmm. he had the earth, and the honorable man dwelt in it. So now Job is talking, he didn't say man in plural. He says, eh, but as for the mighty man, meaning what? Singular. As for the mighty man, he had the earth. And the honorable man dwelt in it, in the earth. You understand? So who's this man that he's talking about? You understand? That mighty man, that mighty man that had the earth, that honorable man that dwelt in the earth that was created for him and his sons and daughters after him. Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Esther, chapter 7, verse 46. 2nd Esther, chapter 7 and verse 46. Read what you got. 2nd Esther, chapter 7, verse 46. Read. I answered then and said, mm -hmm. this is my first and last saying, that Read. it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. Or Stop else. Right there. What? What did he say? That it had been what? That, he, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. You see what the Lord did from the beginning? The most high God gave the earth unto Adam. Adam owned the whole earth. He owned the whole planet earth. You understand? And we are the direct descendants of Adam. So this mighty man, this honorable man that had the earth is talking about Adam. Read again. Verse 46. Second Genesis chapter 7 verse 46. Read. I answered then and said, mm -hmm. this is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. Not to have given the earth unto Adam. So what is Ezra teaching us? Ezra is teaching us that God gave the earth unto Adam. That black man that was formed from the dust of the ground. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 49 verse 16. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Chapter 49 verse 16. We're still dealing with that man. You understand? That mighty man that owned the earth. That honorable man that dwelt in the earth that was created for him. Watch this. Sirach 49, verse 16. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 49, verse 16. Read. Sim and Sheth were in great honor among men. They were what? And were in great honor among men. 
is a Sam that's going into Shem. That's Shem. Is a Shem and Seth were in great honor among men. What? Why were these men honored? Because they had wisdom. You understand? Go ahead. And so was Adam above every living thing in the in the creation. You see what he's saying? It says, and so was Adam because uh, Shem and Seth, they come out of Adam. They come out of the lineage of Adam. So you see, you see what he's saying? It says Sam, which is Shem, and Seth, which replaced Abel, which was killed by Cain. He says, we're in great honor among men. Okay? And so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. So Adam was honored above every living thing in the creation. That's why the descendants of Adam, they also what? They were honored among men. You understand? Watch this. Give me second Esther, chapter 16, verse 61. Okay. Adam, he says he was he was honorable among all every living, every, every bit of God's creation. You understand? Adam was on the top. Watch this. Get that. Second Esther 16, verse 61. What made Adam so honorable above every living creature that God created in the earth? Read that. Second Ezra 16, verse 61. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 61. Read. He made man and put mm -hmm. his heart in the midst of the body. What did he do? He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body. This man that he made is talking about Adam, the first man. Okay, that honorable man above every living creature that God made on the earth. Go ahead. And gave him breath, life, and understanding. So Adam was given breath of life. He was given breath, which is the commandment, and it gave him life. You understand? And understanding. So he had breath, life, and understanding in him. That is what was given to Adam, and that's what made Adam such a that's what made Adam so honorable above every living creature that the Lord made. You understand? What made Adam honorable, it wasn't his good looks. What made Adam honorable, it, it wasn't how good he can speak. You understand how tall he was? Mm -mm. What made Adam honorable was the breath, the life and understanding that was given unto him by the Most High God. Read that thing again. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 61. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath life and understanding I'm sorry read that verse again second is 16 verse 61 second is chapter 16 verse 61 read he made man and put his hearts in the midst of the body mm -hmm. and gave him breath life and understanding and gave him breath life and understanding watch this give me that in wisdom of solomon 10 verse 1 Wisdom Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. We need to understand what made Adam so honorable. What made Adam such a God on earth? You understand? Because when you are honored in the scripts, according to the most High God, it's based on what you applying God's laws. And that's why Adam was honorable and his descendants after him. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. She preserved the first form father of the world mm -hmm. that was created alone Read. and brought him out of his hole. You see what he's saying? The she is wisdom. That, that what? He says, she, which is wisdom, preserved the first form father of the world. So the wisdom of the Lord is what preserved Adam, is what gave Adam honor and status and fame and greatness. You understand? Above every living creature that God made. And he was created alone and was brought out of his fall. That's when after Adam and Eve sinned and there was given the blood of the animals, the, the, the law of animal sacrifice was introduced unto them. And guess what? They were, they were clothed with what? With righteousness. You understand? That's what it means, what it says, when it says was brought out of his fall. Go ahead. Verse two, read. And gave him power to rule all things. And Adam was given power to rule all things. The power that Adam had to rule all things was the wisdom that preserved him in verse 1. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 6.21. Simple. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 21. Come on. 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 21. Read. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, mm -hmm. O ye kings of the people, come on, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. You see that thing? It says, if your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. Wisdom is how we are going to be honored on this earth. They're just like the same way our forefather Adam was honored and his generations after him, they were honored because of wisdom. You understand? And they ruled because the wisdom of the Lord was in them. The spirit of Christ was in them, which gave them power to rule, to give guidance, to give counsel. You understand? To build the nation of Israel and to put honor upon them. It wasn't because of their good looks. It was because of the wisdom that was in them. You understand? Read that again, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 21. Read. If your delight be then enthroned in scepters, mm -hmm. O ye kings of the people, Come on. honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. Watch this. Give me Sarah 24, verse 1. He says, honor wisdom and ye shall rule forevermore. The reason why our forefathers in the past were able to rule, you understand? They were able to, to sit on thrones, you understand, in the past, like David, King David. King Solomon and so forth, Hezekiah, so on and so forth. The reason why they were able to do that was because they honored wisdom. Okay, watch this, Sarah 24 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 verse 1. Read. Wisdom shall praise herself mm. and shall glory in the midst of her people. You see, what, you see what he's saying? Wisdom will praise herself and wisdom will glory in the midst of her people. That means wisdom is very specific to a specific people on this earth. The wisdom of the Lord, it was not created to be to dwell among any other people on earth. Mm -mm. It was created to dwell in the midst of her people. He's going to tell you who those are. Next verse. Come on. In the congregation of the Most High, shall she open her mouth mm -hmm. and triumph before his power. So now the people of wisdom, he says, wisdom will dwell, will glory in the midst of a people. Those people is the congregation of the Mosa in verse 2. Is letting you know who those people are. The congregation of the Mosa, wisdom will dwell among her people, which is the congregation of the Mosa. Give me Psalm 74 verse 2. Let's see who is the congregation of the Mosa that wisdom will only dwell in the midst of. Read that. Psalm 74 verse 2. Psalms chapter 74, verse 2. Read. Remember thy congregation, which mm -hmm. thou hast purchased of old. Read. The rod of thine inheritance, Come on. which thou hast redeemed. Mm -hmm. This Mount Zion. This what? This Mount Zion. This Mount Zion. This Mount Zion is the congregation which the Lord has purchased of old. This Mount Zion. Mount Zion is another name for what is a rape. Wherein thou hast dwelt. So the congregation of the Most High God is Mount Zion. So go back to where he was at. Sarah 24 verse 1 again. Verse 2 again. So we understand. Okay, read. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 verse 1. Come on. Verse 2. In the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth. Mm -hmm. And triumph before his power. You see what he's saying? In the congregation of the Mosa. Who's the congregation of the Mosa? Is the 12 tribes of Israel, Mount Zion. So wisdom is not for a, all nations on earth. The wisdom of the Lord is only for Mount Zion, the congregation of the Lord. Go ahead. I came out of the mouth of the Mosa mm -hmm. and covered the earth as a cloud. You see what he's saying? I came out of the mouth of the Most High. This is wisdom now. Watch this. Give me that in second. Go back to second Esdras 16 verse 61. He says, I came out of the mouth of the Most High. This is wisdom speaking now. Okay. Go back to second Esdras 16 verse 61. Second Esdras chapter 16 verse 61. Read. He made man and put mm -hmm. his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life and understanding. You see that thing? They, he is the most high God that made man and put the heart in the midst of his body and gave him breath, 
How did he give him this bread? Watch this. Get Genesis 2 verse 7. Okay. He says, out of the Most High, he comes, he says, wisdom says, she, she came out of the mouth of the Most High. Watch this. Genesis 2 verse 7. Read. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God, for man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Come on. And man became a living soul. So the Most High God is the one that breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. What is that? God's laws. Adam was given the commandments of the Most High. You understand? Go back to where was that now. Okay. Sarah 24. Verse 3 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 24, verse 3. Read. I came out of the mouth of the Most High mm -hmm. and covered the earth as a cloud. Read. I dwelt in high places, and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. Okay, come on. That's in the that's where the most high God is. Go ahead. I alone compassed the circuits of heaven mm -hmm. and walked in the bottom of the deep. Okay, come on. Meaning the wisdom of the Lord is everywhere. Where the most high God is, this, this throne is it, it says what? I covered the earth as a cloud. Okay. I dwelt in high places, and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. Go ahead. In the waves of the sea and in all the earth and mm -hmm. in every people and nation, I got a position. Now that's heavy right there. He says, in the waves of the sea and in the earth and in every people and nation, I got a possession. This is wisdom of the Lord speaking. In every people and nation is the, what? Is the people and the congregation in verse one and two. The Lord, this wisdom of the Lord says, she got a possession. You understand? Read. With all these, I sought rest. Mm -hmm. and, in who, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? Now the wisdom of the Lord is asking. He says, in whose inheritance shall I abide? Meaning what? In which people, which nation, you understand, should, should I abide? Come on. This is an answer. This is a question and answer situation here. Read again. Verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 verse 7. Mm -hmm. With all these I sought rest, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? Come on. So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, mm. and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said... Read again. Hold on. Read that verse again. Verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 24, verse 8. Read. So the creator of all things gave me a commandment. And he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest mm -hmm. and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. So now the wisdom of the most high God coming from on high down here on earth. You understand? Verse 7 is, is saying, with all these, I sought rest. With all the above mentioned, it says, I sought rest. And in whose inheritance shall I abide? It says, so the creator of all things gave me a commandment. So the creator of all things, that's the most High God, gave wisdom the commandment. It says, he says what? And he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. So of all the, all the creations that the Lord made, you understand? Of all the people that the most High God made, he sought to put, he saw it fit to put wisdom in the 12 tribes of this. You understand? From Adam on down. Okay? That's why today we bethink ourselves. That's why today we know we is. Why? Because of what the Most High God saw fit to put wisdom, that wisdom should rest in the tabernacle of Jacob and in the inheritance of Israel. Go ahead. He created me from the beginning before the world. Mm -hmm. And I shall never fail. The wisdom of the Lord will never fail. Go ahead. In the holy tabernacle, I served before him. Mm -hmm. And so was I established in Zion. You see what he's saying? He says, in the holy tabernacle, I served before him. He's talking about the most high God in the heavens now. Because wisdom is actually who? Christ. He says, so was I established in Zion also. That's what we read in verse 8. Go ahead. Likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest. 
-hmm. And in Jerusalem was my power. Come on. And I took root in an honorable people. Stop right there. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 24, verse 12. Read. And I took root in an honorable people. So wisdom says she took root in an honorable people because the reason why these honorable people were honorable above all nations on earth is because wisdom took root in them. You understand? Wisdom took root in them. Go ahead. Even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. Meaning indeed in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. Give me Sarah 17, 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 17. Who is the portion of the Lord's inheritance? Okay, watch this. Sarah 17, verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 17. Read. For in the division of the nations of the whole mm -hmm. earth, he set a ruler over every people. Come on. But Israel is the Lord's portion. But Israel is what? But Israel is the Lord's portion. So we are Israel and we are the Lord's portion. You understand? We are the Lord's portion. Go back to where it was at now. Sarah 24 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. Which is Israel. So now it says he took root in an honorable people from Aram on down. Go back to Sarah 49 verse 16. Okay, let's go back there. Sarah 49 verse 16. Because you might be wondering, why am I going over this when we're going over marriage? It's very, very paramount what I'm going over. Just pay attention. Okay, Sarah 49 verse 16. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 49 verse 16. Mm -hmm. Sem and Sheth were in great honor among men. Right. And them above every living thing in the creation. You see that thing? So what made Aram honorable was what? Aram was given wisdom. Aram was given wisdom. That's why he became honorable. And the generations after Aram, they, they, those that was chosen, they also became honorable and their children after them. You understand? So go back to where he was at now. Sarah 24 verse 12. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And I took root in an honorable people. Come on. Even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. Mm -hmm. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 verse 12. And I took root in an honorable people. Even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. So now those honorable people, they start from Aram, then Seth, then Shem, you understand? And the children of Shem that was, that was chosen. Afak said and so forth. Reu. Okay, when you read Genesis uh, Genesis 11, you can read about that in Genesis 11 or First Chronicles chapter 1. You can read about that. Watch this. What made Adam so honorable, you understand, is because of the wisdom of the Most High God. Watch this. The first thing that Adam was given was the breath of life, God's commandments. And God's commandments give you sense. The Most High God has to give you things in order for you to be what? To be honorable in his sight. You understand? Watch this. Give me Genesis 2 verse 7. Let's go back there. Because we read it earlier on. Genesis 2 verse 7. Read that. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Come on. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. The first thing that was given to Adam was what? Wisdom. The first thing that was given to Adam was wisdom. Okay, come on, verse 8. Read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Mm -hmm. And there he put the man whom, whom he had formed. So now, you see what's going on now? It says the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Now you've got vacant land. You understand? That needs to be tilled. It says, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So now Adam is given what? He's given a place to stay. You understand? He's given a place to stay. He put a man whom he had formed. Jump down to verse 15 now. Watch this. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden 
to dress it and to keep it. So now, after Adam was given wisdom, which is the first thing, by the way, which was what made Adam honorable, wisdom. After he was given wisdom, he was given a place to stay. You understand? Thirdly, Adam was given a job. He was given a job, you understand, to maintain himself, to take care of the Lord's business. Read that again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the, into the garden of Eden to dress it mm -hmm. and to keep it. To dress it and to keep him and to take care of it, to look after it. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Okay. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Jump down to verse 19. Read. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And out of the ground, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast in the field, and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Right. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So now Adam was given a place to stay, Adam was given a job, Adam was given responsibility, so that he can be accountable for the what? For the things that the Lord commanded unto him. You understand? So now it says, every fowl of the air the Lord made. And he says, he brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So in order for Adam to do this, Adam had to have wisdom to know how what to name the animals that exist on earth. That means Adam knew their spirit. That's why hence the names he gave unto them based on their spirits, the trees and so forth. Adam was able to read the spirits of the trees and gave them names based on the spirits that they were moving in. So every living creature was connected to Adam, including the earth, you understand? Because the earth was given to Adam. So every living creature, every bit of God's creation, guess what? They submitted themselves unto Adam, including the earth. Understand that? So the Lord, obviously, he trusted Adam because he gave him wisdom, and guess what? He gave him a place to stay. He gave him a job. And Adam was handling business. Okay. He was looking after the Mosa God's empire. Understand that. Okay. Read. Verse 20. Verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. Right. But for Adam, there was not found and help meets for him. He says, but for Adam... But for Adam was, was there no found and help meet for him. So Adam gave names to all cattle like you read in Genesis 1. So Genesis 2 is just a more detailed version of Genesis, the first chapter. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. Watch this. Adam was given a job. He's given a task. You understand? So Adam understood everything on this earth. Adam understood everything. When you read about our forefathers, because give me that in 2nd Esdras. I want to show you something. Second Esdras chapter 5 is 54. Okay. Second Esdras 5. Second Esdras chapter 5 and verse 54. Now, this is during the time of Persia. Now the Lord is the, the, the Lord sent the angel to speak to Esdras. Okay, watch this. Read that. Second Esdras chapter 5 is 54. Mm -hmm. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of stature than those that were before you. It says you are less of stature than those that were before you. Less of stature, height, status, fame, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. So the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that Ezra's had is nothing compared to what Adam had. You understand? Because generations later, thousands of generations later, the wisdom that the Lord bestowed upon us is started to decrease over time because of sin. So now, watch this. Let me show you something. Give me that in... Uh, Give me the book of First Samuel, okay? Give me First Samuel chapter fourteen, now, please. Let me see. Give me First Samuel, no, Second Samuel chapter fourteen, verse twenty. Second Samuel chapter fourteen, verse twenty. Because at this point, this is when um, David's wife was taken. You understand? And he was promised to another man, okay? And now he had to get his wife back. Okay, because that man had not dealt with him because Saul had not killed David as yet. So he had promised Michal 
to another man because he was hoping that he was going to kill kill David. You understand? Once David is dead, then his what the his daughter will now start to deal with that other man, like husband and husband and wife does. And that didn't happen. Watch this. Second Samuel fourteen verse twenty. I'm going to show you really how great we used to be. This is during the time of of King David. Right? Okay, watch this. Read that. Second Samuel chapter fourteen verse twenty. Mm -hmm. To fetch about this former speech, had thy servant Joab done this thing? Come on. And my Lord is wise, mm -hmm. according to the wisdom of an angel of God. Read. To know all things that are in the earth. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. Our forefather King David, he says, he says what? He says, Job is saying, my Lord is wise, talking to King David. He says, according to the wisdom of an angel of God. So the level of wisdom that King David had, he had the, the level of wisdom that an angel of the Lord would have to know all things that are in the earth. So if King David was able to understand all these things, how much more Adam? You understand? I mean, you really have to think about that. How much more our forefather Adam? What level was he on? You understand? Read that thing again, verse 20. Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 20. Read. To fetch about this form of speech, had thy servant Joab done this thing. Mm -hmm. And my Lord is wise, according Read. to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. You see that? Because the angels, they know everything. The angel of the Lord, they know everything that is happening on earth. King David was just like that. How about Adam? That means Adam's level, level of wisdom was, listen, was on, 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 on another level that you cannot even imagine. You understand? Now, let's go back. Okay. Go back to Genesis chapter 2. Okay. Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 20 again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. Read. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So now Adam was given wisdom, a place to stay, you understand, and a job, responsibility. And Adam was given the task of naming all the, every bit of God's creation, Adam gave it names. Adam had to understand everything about that creature. The spirit also that was put in that creature. Adam understood all that. You understand? He understood the end, how the end. Today, you see the white man, he been putting cameras on the end, trying to figure out how they behave and all that, the end colony. Adam didn't have to do none of that stuff. He just understood that by wisdom. Because every bit of God's creation was connected to him and him to it. That's why he gave them names based on the spirit that the Lord poured upon every living creature that God made. So Adam was on another level. Adam was a God on earth. Understand that thing. That's what made him honorable. You understand? And he was trustworthy, trustworthy in the sight of the Lord. That's why the Lord gave him responsibility such as this. Now watch this. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 7 verse 15. Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 verse 15. So you brothers, you need to understand the first thing that you need to attain is the wisdom of the Lord. You're not going to receive that wisdom if you don't humble down and apply what this Bible says. Seek counsel, apply, follow, follow the process. You understand? You're not going to be able to attain that wisdom. Understand that. Read that. Sirach 7 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Hate not laborers work. You see what the Bible is saying? Because Adam was given a job, labor. Okay, read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 15. Read. Hate not laborers' work. Don't hate laborers' work. Come on. Neither husbandry. Husbandry goes into what? Goes into um, farming, goes into dealing with farms and so forth, crops, agriculture, and so forth. That's why Adam says he was given what? He was put in the Garden of Eden to till the ground, you understand? To take care of it, to keep it, and to dress it. That's why it says, don't hate laborers work, neither husbandry. Go ahead. Which the Most High had ordained. Because the Most High had ordained laborers work and husbandry 
as from the beginning in Genesis. You understand? Give me Matthew 6, verse 33. Watch this. Let's see what the Son of God said about this thing. Matthew 6, verse 33. We what you got? Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Come on. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see what the Bible, this is Christ speaking. He says, but seek ye first, first, first the kingdom of God, meaning rulership, and his righteousness. Because in order for you to get rulership, you must seek the righteousness of the Most High God first. It says, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is Christ teaching us here? Priority. The Lord is giving us steps on how to what, how to attain wisdom and how to receive the kingdom of heaven on earth and rulership of all nations on earth. The first thing that you must seek is what? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The God's commandment, wisdom. Just like Adam was given, that's the first thing that the Lord gave unto him. Okay? It says, and all these things shall be added unto you. What does that mean? Watch this. Jump up to verse 25. Matthew 6, verse 25. Put, your, put some power in your reading. Come on. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Come on. Therefore, I say unto you, take mm -hmm. no thoughts for your life. Read. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink. Read. No hit for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more, is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment. So now Christ is saying, he says, they take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What shall we, what, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat. What was given to Adam? The breath of life. That was the first thing that was given unto him. And the body than raiment. Because the Lord created from Adam out of the, what? the dust of the ground. And he breathed life into him, which is what the breath of life, God's commandment. So he's saying, listen, take no thought about these things because Adam didn't have to take thought about those things because the Lord provided them. You understand that? The most said God provided them in the garden already. The first thing that was given to Adam was what? The commandments. He was given laws, statutes, and commandments. Wisdom was given unto him. That's what he said right there. Go ahead. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do mm. they reap, nor okay. gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? You see what he's saying? He says, Behold, he says, look at the fowls of the air that we read about in Genesis 2, that he, Adam had to name. You understand? He says, neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Yes. So that's what he's saying, because all of these living creatures that was created, they were created to what to obey and, obe and obey and submit to us. Every bit of God's creation, including the people as well. You understand? Jump down. Jump down to verse, read verse 30 now. Come on. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, mm -hmm. which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Right. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? You see what he's saying? He says, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? He says, you have little faith. He, must, he says, have faith. Okay, come on. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Come on. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He says, because your heavenly Father know that you have need of all these things. May, notice what Christ is mentioning. He's mentioning what? Verse 31 says, what shall we eat? That's food. What shall we drink? That's drink. Thirst. And what shall we, what shall we be clothed? That's nakedness. You understand? So these are the basic things in life. The Lord is saying, listen, the, the most high God will provide these things, just like he did for Adam in the garden. 
You understand? If so, will he do for you this day? That's what he's saying right there. But the first thing that he said you must ask for is what? Next verse. Come on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm. And all these things shall be added unto you. And all these things shall be added unto you. Watch this. Give me Sarah 39 verse 26. Adam was given wisdom, right? He was given wisdom. He was given a place to stay. He was given a job, responsibility and all that. But the first thing that was given unto him was wisdom. Okay? Read that. Sarah 39 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 39 verse 26. Read. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, Stop fire. Right there. The principal things, meaning what? The main important things for the whole use of man's life. For the whole use of man's life. The principal things. The important things. You understand? Read that again. Ecclesiastes 39 verse 26. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, mm -hmm. fire, iron, and salt, mm -hmm. flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil and clothing. Where do these things come from? They come from the ground. The ground that was given, that was commanded to Adam said, listen, you must keep this ground and you must till it. You must take care of it. You must work the land. All of these things that we're reading here, they come from the ground. You understand? But Adam was what? He was given wisdom first. All these things were added unto him that we're reading here. You understand? Come on. All these things are good for the are good to the godly. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil because we lost everything because of our sins. Now, Sarah 29, 21. Sarah 29, verse 21. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 21. Read. The chief thing for life is water mm -hmm. and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. All of these things, these are the principal things for the whole use of man's life, which was added unto Adam after he received wisdom first and foremost. You understand? All these things will be, will be taken care of. The Lord says, I'm going to provide these things for you. All you have to do, just keep the commandments. I'm going to give you wisdom because that's the first thing that you must seek after. Wisdom of the Lord, first and foremost. Okay? Watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something, brothers. Okay? Because what you need to understand, I'm trying to show you something here. We read in Hebrews 13 verse 4, it says, marriage is honorable. What's bringing honor into marriage is or everything that we just read, those are the first steps to bring honor into a marriage. You understand? But before you can think about marriage, guess what the first thing that must come to your mind? The first thing that comes to your mind is what? Wisdom of the Lord, first and foremost. You understand? The wisdom of the Lord, you must apply it, you must understand it inside out. So you can be closer to the Lord and it will provide all these things unto you, including a wife, a family, how to build a nation. You understand? You need to understand that thing. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Genesis, okay? Give me Genesis 2 verse 18. Genesis 2 verse 18. Watch this. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Read. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man, that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I will make him and help meet for him. Now, this is heavy right here. You see that part when it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Now, I'm going to show you something here with this. Okay. So you cannot, you cannot, before you think of a wife. You understand? You think of a woman, right? But before you think of a woman, you must first examine, are you a man first? You cannot think of a woman without you thinking, without you examining if you're a man. According to the scriptures. Because a lot of you, you just think last, 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 having sex and all that. That's what you think about. 
because you're what? You're still dealing with those youthful lusts. So sex is in your head, both men and women, okay? Some are in denial, but watch this. Read that thing again, verse 18, Genesis 2, verse 18. Genesis 2, verse 18. Go ahead. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I will make him and help meet for him. I will make him and help meet for him. And help meet. The word meet means good. I will make him and help good for him. Because it is not good that he is without one. That's what the Lord is saying right there. But before you can think of a woman, you must first examine if you yourself are a man. You understand? Because a lot of you don't do that. You be lusting after sisters, but you don't first examine if you are a man. Sisters do the same thing. They be lusting after brothers, but they don't think if they are a woman first. Yes, you are a woman. You are a girl. You understand? You've got all the reproductive parts that says you are a woman. But according to the scriptures, that's not what it means to be a woman. Right? It's more than that. It's more than just giving birth and so forth. It's more than just you lying on your back. You understand? Watch this. Give me, hmm, jump down to verse 20. Read verse 20. Genesis 2, verse 20. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found in help meet for him. That's the part we want to deal with. But for Adam, there was not found in help meet for him and help good for him. Okay, come on, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, mm -hmm. and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So now the Lord is what is gonna what is gonna create and help meat for Adam, and help good for Adam because Adam was already good in the sight of the Lord. Adam had already built a reputation with the Most High. You understand? Now the Lord is gonna create and help that is good for Adam. You understand? Because Adam at this point he had everything. Adam didn't like nothing. He had wisdom. You understand? He had power. Okay. He had fame. He had a job. He had a place to stay. He was ruling over the empire, which is the earth, and everything in it. So Adam was already on that level. You understand? He had built a good report for himself with the Lord at this point. Okay. Read that again, verse 21. Genesis of the 2, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Right. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So Adam's flesh. So Adam's flesh, this woman that is going to be formed out of Adam, that, that this woman that is going to be formed will be formed out of Adam's flesh and bones. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So Eve was created out of Adam and she was brought to Adam. Like a father hands, hands over their daughter to her husband. You understand? Like we read in Tobit 7 verse 13. Yes. That's what we're reading here. Okay. It says, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made a woman and brought her unto the man. So there's no point where the woman was by herself. You don't read about that in the scriptures. Like you see, unlike you see today with our sisters, they don't want they don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be told how to do. Let me tell you something, sisters. You have no mind of your own. Let me say that again in case I started. You sisters, you've got that Jezebel spirit. Listen, you have no mind of your own. You have no opinions. You understand? Because your mind must be after what? After your husband's mind if you are married. If not, you must be after your leadership's mind if you're not married because they are fathers unto you to guide you and to teach you. You understand? And we as men, we have no mind of our own. The mind that we have is the mind of Christ. Just like Christ does not have a mind, does not have a mind of his own. The mind that Christ has is the mind of the Most High. That's the order. You understand? That's the order. Okay? Read on. Verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 
You see what he's saying? It says, this is now bone of my bones, okay? And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That's what word woman means, meaning from man. Watch this. Give me Judges chapter 9, verse 2. It says what? It says, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Give me Judges 9, verse 2. Judges. Read that. Come on. Judges chapter 9, verse 2. Read. Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, mm -hmm. whether is better for you either that all the sons of Jerubal, which are three score and ten persons, reign over you, or Come that on. one reign over you. Right. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. You see what he's saying? He says, remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. What is he talking about? We family. That's what he's saying right there. He says, remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Just like Adam, just like Eve was. You understand? That's why Adam said what he said. He says, you are what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. That's why later on Adam prophesied how marriage was going to be. That what? Man shall leave father and mother and they too shall be one flesh. Why? Because Eve was taken out of Adam, out of Adam's own flesh. That's why he said what he said when he prophesied in Genesis 2.24. Go back to where was it now, okay? Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. Is it verse 23? Mm, verse 23. Read that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Read. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and mm -hmm. flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now that's heavy right there. It says, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So when he says the two shall be one flesh, why? Because you were taken directly out of us. You understand? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, we shall be one because you come from me. That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? So now imagine you come from the man, okay? You come from the man, and now you are you are you, are, you because of because of what because you want to be equal or above the man that you come from now you are estranged from that man isn't that something that's some heavy stuff right there think about that now you are estranged from that man that's some heavy stuff right there watch this give me the book of Tobit 6 verse 17 Tobit chapter 6 verse 17 read that because Eve was created for Adam. You understand? Eve was created to serve Adam, to glorify Adam, just like Adam was created to glorify the Most High. Read that. Tobit 6, verse 17. Come on. Tobit chapter 6, verse 17. Read. And the devil shall smell it mm -hmm. and flee away and never come again anymore. But when thou shalt come to her, Rise up both of you and pray to God, which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Right. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. Stop right there. What did he say? Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. He says, don't be afraid. Fear not, because she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. That's what we're reading here in Genesis 2. Eve was appointed to Adam from the beginning. You understand? Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. It says, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. Go ahead. And thou shalt preserve her. Stop right and there. She and thou shalt, hold on, thou shalt what? And thou shalt preserve her. Stop right there. I'm going to show you something heavy here. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 10. Verse, verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. It says, and thou shalt preserve it. She was appointed unto thee from the beginning, and you, the man, shall preserve this woman. How? Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. She preserved the first form father of the world. She did what? She preserved the first form father of the world. 
she preserved, she preserved, she preserved the first form father of the world. The she that is wisdom that preserved Adam from the beginning. So the same wisdom that preserved Adam from the beginning and kept Adam to be an honorable man, to be a God on earth, to be bestowed with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding above every bit of God's creation. Guess what? The same wisdom that is in Adam is the same wisdom that is going to preserve Eve. How? Because Adam will have to teach Eve his wife. Because Eve doesn't know nothing. Eve, when she came, she did not have anything in her head. It was the job of Adam to do what? To fill that mind with God's wisdom. To preserve it from being a simp, from being a bum. Because women can be bums too. Women can be simps too. As soon as long as you are rebellious as a sister, as long as you are given an instruction, you don't want to do it, you are passive aggressive, you are a simp. You understand? You are a simp. You have a weak mind. So a lot of the times when sisters be rebellious, backing up, not wanting to apply, guess what? That's a simp sister. That's a life woman. You understand? So what are we reading here? The Lord is teaching us how to preserve our sisters, just like the Lord is preserving us with this wisdom. Read that thing again, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. He preserved the first one father of the world. Come on. That was created alone. Mm -hmm. And brought him out of his fall. And brought him out of his fall. You, you understand? So the wisdom that preserved Adam to have to be a to be a God on earth is the same wisdom that is going to preserve Eve from being a simp. Okay. Go back to where it was at Tobit 6, verse 17. Read from that point where it says, Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. Read that. Tobit chapter 6, verse 17. Come on. Fear not. For she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. Read. And thou shalt preserve her. Mm -hmm. And she shall go with thee. You see that thing? She shall go with thee. So if she's going with the man, she's following the man. Wherever the man is going, she's following along. You understand? Because what? She's submitting herself to this man. Anything and everything she wants to learn and know about, she must go to this man who's, be, who's, what? who's endowed with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. From the most high God Himself. You understand? That's how our sisters was empowered back then. That's how Eve was empowered. Why? Because the black man was in full power over all of every bit of God's creation on earth. You understand? That's why I was, our foremothers, they had such such wisdom because of, they reverence their husbands, their daughters in Israel. They reverence their fathers. That's why when you read about them, you see they said they were they was full of good works. They had wisdom. Why? Because they were not disrespectful to their parents. You understand? Because they are not supposed to be by themselves. They're not supposed to have that independent mindset like is prevalent among our black women today. Okay? Watch this. He says, she's appointed unto thee from the beginning. It says, and what? And thou shalt preserve her, and she shall go with thee. Watch this. Hmm. Now, go back. Go back to where was that? Okay, let's go back to where he was at now. Genesis 2, verse 23. Watch this. Come on. Genesis 2, verse 23. Read. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and mm. flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. Now, watch this. Now, what made Adam such a God on earth? He says he had power to rule all things. Adam was a God on earth. Now, because in order for Adam to understand that, okay, the Lord saw fit to give Adam a wife. That's what you need to understand. The Lord saw fit to give Adam a wife that was going to be good for him. And how was this woman going to be good for Adam? Because Adam had enough wisdom to be able to educate this woman, to fill her mind and spirit with wisdom, you understand? To take away her reproach. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. Because Adam was a man in the sight of the Lord. That's what you need, you men need to understand. Before you think of a woman, you must first establish and examine, are you a man in the sight of the Lord? And if so, are you keeping all of God's commandments? Are you not simping? Are you not uh, playing church? You understand? You need to ask yourself those questions. 
before you can even think of a sister. If a sister comes to mind, ask yourself, am I a man like our forefather Adam was, our forefather Abraham was, before God saw it fit to give a wife unto them. Okay, read that. First Kings 2 verse 2. Read. First Kings chapter 2 verse 2. Come on. I go the way of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man. Now this is King David talking to his son Solomon. Read verse 1 so we can understand. First Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. Mm -hmm. And he charged Solomon his son saying, Read. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man. So now in verse one, it says that the, it says what the days of David drew nigh that he should die. So David was about to die. You understand? He was to he was about to be gathered to unto his fathers. And before he did that, he charged Solomon, meaning he commanded Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. What does that mean? Give me Sarah 41, verse 3. Because he's explaining in verse 1 when he says, The days of David drew nigh that he should die. Then he says, I go the way of all the earth. Watch this. Sarah 41, verse 3. Ecclesiastes 41, verse 3. Go ahead. Fear not the sentence of death. Mm -hmm. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For come this on. is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. The sentence of the Lord over all flesh is death. The sentence of the, of, of the, sentence of the Lord over all flesh is death. That's why David says, I go the way of all the earth. Because all our days are numbered on this earth. Watch this. Give me that in Job chapter 20 real quick. Job 20. Okay. Job chapter 20 and verse. Uh, start of verse, start of verse two. I think that's what I want. Job chapter 20 verse two. Therefore do my thoughts cause no, no. me to answer. I'm sorry. No, 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 not Job 20. Okay, Job 14. Yeah, that's what I want right there. Job 14 verse 1. Read that. Job chapter 14 verse 1. Come on. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He says, man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. You understand? Because in, in this lifetime, we are born of women, okay? Meaning what? We are born here on this earth, the way that we are born, and our lifespan is short. Okay, read. He cometh forth like a flower, mm. and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, we come in like a flower, and is, we are cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not, because we die. Go ahead. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Read. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not yeah. one. That's what our people are doing today. They are trying to bring a clean thing out of an unclean custom called Christmas. They are trying to say, no, it's the birth of Christ. You cannot make it up. Go ahead. Seeing his days are determined, the mm. number of his months are with thee. Come on. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, seeing his days are determined, meaning our days on earth are limited. The number of his months are with thee. So the Lord even knows how you're going to die on this year. You understand? You're going to die when you are X amount of years and X amount of months. The Lord already knows that. It's already set. You cannot go beyond that. You understand? That's why it says, thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Read. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. You see that thing? Because we come in, we live and we die. Next generation after so on and so forth until the Lord returns. Okay? Now go back to First Kings now. Chapter 2 verse 2. 
First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. Go ahead. I go the way of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Show yourself a man. He says, I go the way of all the earth, meaning I'm going to die because my days are determined. He says, now be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Because King Solomon was a male, was he not? Yes, he was. But now King David is saying, show yourself a man. That means just because you are a male does not mean you are a man. You have to be vetted with the laws of God to prove yourself to be a man. David is going to tell his son Solomon how to become one. Next verse. Come on. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. That's the first thing to do. Keep the charge of the Lord your God. Read on. To walk in his ways. Read. To keep his statutes. Uh -huh. And his commandments. And his judgments. And his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses. That oh, thou on. mayest. That thou mayest prosper. In all that thou doest. And whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So you see what it means? It says, listen, this is what it means to be a man. Walk in all his ways to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law. You understand? Of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So David is teaching his son how to be a man. So before you can think of being, of think of a sister, you must think of, you must check. I, am I a man in the sight of the Lord or am I just a male? You must ask yourself those questions because a lot of you, you're just thinking when a woman pops into your head, you're thinking sex. Mm -mm. Think, are you a man? Because Adam was fit to be a man so much so that the Lord saw fit to send him and help good for him. You understand? So likewise, this day is the same thing. You understand? It's the same thing this day. Watch this. Give me. Now, the second thing that you need to understand is this. Whenever you, when you think of a, a woman, you must what? You must think, am I a man in the sight of the Lord? Secondly, the minute you think that, because you'll understand, okay, these are the things, these are requirements that I need to meet in order for me to become a man in the sight of the Lord. Secondly, now you think of a wife. Because you cannot think of a woman, now wife must pop up. Because now you think of a, a woman, now, okay, I'm a man. Mm, am I a man? If it's a yes, then what happens next? Wife. You see that? So that means if it's wife, that means guess what comes to your head? Husband. Lord. And as a husband, you can be a simp. Neither can you marry a simp sister. You understand? So you need to constantly be what? You need to constantly be looking at the opposite or okay, yes, I want, a, I want a woman, but am I man enough to have a woman? If the answer is no, don't, don't go any further. Secondly, once you say, mm, I'm a man enough now, understand the scriptures and apply them, you understand, so on and so forth. Now you start thinking about a wife. Okay, am I prepared to be a husband? That's what must come to your head. You understand? You need to understand, and there's steps to that. Man, husband. Because now that's another level of leadership. You understand? So these are steps to understand what it means when it says marriage is honorable. You have to go past through. You need to pass through all these steps for you to get to that marriage part where you can understand how honorable it is. And that is based upon what? The wisdom that the Lord has bestowed upon you. Now you are good enough to be a man in the sight of the Lord. Next, you need to understand. And wife, okay, I need to be a husband. This woman has to be educated to be a wife. Now that you are in that realm of husband and wife, guess the next thing that must come into your mind. What, the, what is that? Father. Hmm? Mother. You see that? No, there's no sex here. So just think, if, you, if sex is the first thing, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. You understand? That union is going to fail 100%. There's no if or maybe about it. Understand that thing. Watch this. Now go back to Genesis 2, okay? Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 again. Read that thing again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Right. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm. and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So what's happening here is that now 
the law, what is the law doing? Uh, Eve, Eve is brought to Adam, okay? Eve is brought to Adam, and they too now, they become one flesh. Now, this is the marriage. You understand? This is the marriage right here. Now, watch this. Because the Lord brought Eve unto Adam and he created Eve out of Adam, for Adam, you understand, to glorify him. Watch this. Give me Sarah 36, verse 24. Sarah 36, verse 24. Okay. Now we are entering into the husband and wife realm. We dealt with the man realm, you understand? Now we are dealing with my husband and wife. Read that. Sarah 36, verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Go ahead. He that gets at the wife begineth mm -hmm. a position. Read. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Okay, you are reading too slow. Okay, read that thing again, verse 24. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Read. He that gets at the wife begineth a position. A mm -hmm. help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So what we're reading here is says, he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. So now you get a wife. That means you are beginning a possession. Now you're going to build your possession. Your possession goes into what? Your wife, the house that you're going to build, the children you're going to have, the nation you're going to build. That's your possession. You understand? You are beginning a possession. That's what this is going into. Read again, verse 24. Come on. Ecclesiastes 36, verse 24. Read. He that gets at the wife, begin at the position. Mm -hmm. A help like unto himself and a pillow of rest. A help like unto himself and a pillow of rest. I want to back up a little bit. Give me Genesis 2, 24. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but it's okay. Genesis 2, 24. I'm going to show you something with this verse right here. Genesis 2, verse 24. Read that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, mm -hmm. and they shall be one flesh. So now Adam is prophesying how marriage is going to be. It says, therefore shall man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. The reason why he's saying they shall be one flesh is because in verse 23, read verse 23 again so we understand. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Come on. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and mm -hmm. flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. That's why he said in verse 24, they two shall, he says, they, and they shall be one flesh. Why? Because he was one flesh with his wife. His wife was one flesh, was one with him. The wife was one with Adam. Eve was one with Adam. That's why now he's prophesying how marriage is going to be because they two must be one flesh. Now, Adam is prophesying how the future marriage is going to look like based on his current marriage on how it looks like. Everybody, everybody understand that? Yes, sir. He's basing it on that. You understand? Yes, sir. Now, watch this. Now, give me, give me, go back to Sarah 36, 24. He's basing it on his current marriage because he says, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. That's why he's prophesying how future marriages are going to look like based on how his marriage looks like. Okay. His marriage is the blueprint on how future marriages are supposed to look like in the spirit of Christ. Read that. Sarah 36, 24. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Right. He that gets at the wife beginneth a position, mm -hmm. a help like unto himself, and the pillow of rest. So now he says, if you get a wife, you're beginning a possession, a help like unto himself, like unto himself, like unto himself, meaning what? Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones, one flesh, and a pillow of rest. Watch this. Give me Sarah 7, 726 now. It says, he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. We're going to deal with that. A help like unto himself. What does that mean? A help like unto himself. He didn't say a help like unto herself. No. The woman must follow the husband. The woman must follow the man. That's the order. Like we read in Tobit 617. Now read that. Okay. Sarak 726. Come on. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 26. Ray. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Mm -hmm. Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, hast thou a wife after thy mind? That's why it says, a help like unto himself. Do you have a wife after your mind? Meaning this woman must be a help like unto you. Meaning what? Her mind must mirror your mind. Her thought process must mirror your thought process. She must follow you because you are her Lord. You understand? You men understand that? So her mind must be after your mind. That's how you become one flesh. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. So a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So this woman cannot be a simp. And how do you prevent this woman from being a simp? Your job is to educate this woman. But if she does not be, a, if she does not want to be educated, she will remain a simp. You understand? And sisters like that, you brothers must stay away from a sister like that because she will what? She will make your life a living hell. She will make your life miserable. Understand that? Okay. Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes seven verse twenty six. Read. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. It says, but give not yourself over to a light woman. Don't give your cause. Listen, you the prize, you the gold. How do you give yourself over to a dumb sister? That means you have a low self-esteem. You understand? You are a simp. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 5. Because why is Aram saying this? Aram is prophesying how future, future marriages are going to look like based on his current one. Because what did Aram do to make sure that they too was one flesh. What did Adam do? Second Ezra 3 verse 5. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 5. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. And gave this a body unto Adam without soul. Right. Which was the workmanship of thine hands. And it is breathed into him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee. So Adam was given the breath of life, okay? Even when he was alive before the Lord, he had wisdom. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And gavest, and unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. What did the Lord do? He, and unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. So unto Adam was given commandments. So Adam was given the commandments. Adam was given God's laws. Watch this. So Adam to make sure that the, he, he, he the, to make sure that Eve was on one accord with him. What did Adam have to do? Adam taught his wife. Adam commanded his wife. Adam ruled over his house with the laws of God. You understand? That's when Adam was still in his right mind. You understand? That's what he did. He did that thing, and he pleased the Lord. Okay, watch this. First Corinthians one verse ten. Because they became one flesh. How did they become one flesh? Because Adam had to make sure that this woman's mind is after his mind. They all speak and think the same, the same thing. They move as one. Okay. How did he do that? He commanded his wife. He didn't ask. He didn't beg. He commanded his wife. He set his house in order according to the scriptures. Okay. Read that. Yes, sir. First Corinthians chapter one, verse ten. Come on. First Corinthians chapter one verse ten. Read. First Corinthians chapter one verse ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, Read. and that there be no divisions among you, mm -hmm. but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You see what the Lord is saying. It says that you what? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. So that means Eve, this, Eve, everything that Eve will speak is the things that she was taught by Adam. You understand? She will speak the same things that Adam would speak, that there be no divisions among you. So that there's no division in the marriage, that they move as one. So Adam is prophesying how marriages are going to be based on how he's, con he's what? He's setting his house in order based on the wisdom that the Lord bestowed upon him. That's why he was able to say what he says 
what he said in Genesis 2.24. You understand? That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. What does that mean? The same mind. Remember what we read in Sirach 7.26. You understand? Has thou a wife after thy mind? This woman must reverence you. She must reverence everything about you, including your mind, most importantly above all. Because with your mind, you serve the laws of God. The same way, she must serve you with the what? With the same mind that you got. Because you are teaching her God's commandments. You are guiding her according to the scriptures, how she must behave. You understand? So that she doesn't speak her own thoughts. She doesn't have her own opinions. But everything that she speaks is based on the things that you taught her, as it is written. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, mm -hmm. and that there be no divisions among you. That there be but no that... divisions, because, we, hold on, because whenever there's divisions in the marriage, is because there's sin involved. There's always sin involved. One of you is in the midst of sin. That's why there's always contention. There's always back and forth. One person does not want to do what the other one is saying because what? The other person does not feel that they should follow the instructions. That's the same thing. That's what sisters do. I'm talking about in the camp. Brothers too. You understand? Because you are in that simp mode. Simp activity. Okay? That's, a, that's an example of a weak mind. I need you men and women to understand that. Okay? Read on. And that there be no divisions among you. Mm -hmm. but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You must be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So your mindset must be, the, the wife's mindset must be according to the husband's mindset. Meaning this, and the same way the, the husband, the, the man, the husband will make decisions is the same way the wife will make decisions if the, as if the husband is not even there. Why? Because that mind was well instructed. And she received the instruction. She didn't preach like a robot. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me Sarah 25 and 1. Because Adam had to make sure that as he taught his wife Eve, he had to make sure that they all spoke the same things, that there was no divisions among them. There was no contentions among them. Eve understood her role, just like Adam already understood his role. Because Adam already understood his role. Eve did not. She had to be taught her role by who? By Adam. Understand that? Okay. Come on. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 1. Come on. In three things I was beautified and so mm -hmm. beautiful both before God and men. Come on. The unity of brethren, the mm -hmm. love of neighbors, mm -hmm. a man and a wife that agree together. You see, you see that part right there? It says the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. What are they agreeing together on? The scriptures. That's the first agreement that men and women must have. Husband and wife must have. Husband and wife must agree on the scripts. And guess what? In the case of the marriage of Adam and Eve, guess what? Adam was already on the God level. Adam already was already on top. He already established a reputation with the father. So that means Adam... He listened, he was a God on earth. He was a mighty man that the earth was given unto him. And he was honored because of that wisdom that he received from the Lord. Now comes Eve. Eve does not know anything. So it's the job of Adam to teach Eve everything that he knows so that Eve can, what? can honor him, can reverence him. You understand? So that Eve can be empowered by Adam being in power. Understand that? You understand? And Adam had to do that. That's why he prophesied about how future marriages are going to look like. Okay? Watch this. Give me Amos 3 verse 3. Amos 3 verse 3. Watch this. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Come on. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Because there's no way. It's impossible. The answer is no. The two cannot work together if you don't agree. Because the first agreement they must have is what? The, the Bible. So you brothers need to understand. When you be proving a sister, the first thing that you must agree on is the scriptures. 
Both of you must have the love for the Most High. Both of you must agree on what the scripture says. Both of you must obey and humble down what the Bible says. No excuses. You understand? You have to be humble down to what this Bible says. Both of you must understand your roles. The woman must understand her role. The brother must understand his role. Okay? That's why it says, read that again, verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Mm -hmm. The answer is no, they cannot. Now watch this. Go back to 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. I'm going to show you something with this. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Read. Right? Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, mm -hmm. and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now I want to show you something. You see that part when it says that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you? Watch this. Give me, I'm giving an example. Give me Genesis 3, verse Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. I want to show you that what Adam did. Adam, he made sure he understood how to how to what how to conduct marriage. And Adam understood that because he already had that wisdom. He already understood that thing. You understand? Everything that the Lord commanded Adam to do, he did it. Now it was time for him to, to command his wife how she must move and reverence and honor him. Okay? Watch this. The proof of is what we're about to read. Genesis 3 verse 2. Read that. Genesis chapter 3 verse 2. Come on. And the, and the woman said unto the serpent, mm -hmm. we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. You see what the woman said? The woman is responding to the serpent now. It says, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Go ahead. But of the fruits of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now, you see what the woman is saying to, to the serpent? Because so how did, how did Eve know all of this? How did she know? How did she know that the fruit of the trees, that is, the, the, you see, so, so we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. How did she know? Give me that in Genesis 2, 16. Watch this. Genesis 2, verse 16. Okay. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Read. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, mm -hmm. Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. You see that? And the Lord God commanded the man. Who's that? Adam. Okay. This was the instruction that came from the Lord to Adam directly. Go ahead. But of the, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You see, this is what the Lord gave to Adam. This is what the Lord commanded to Adam. So how did Eve know? Because, because Adam taught his wife. That's why in Genesis 3, go back to Genesis 3, verse 2 and 3 again. Read those two verses together. Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. Come on. And the woman said unto the serpent, mm -hmm. We may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden, but of the fruits of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now I want to show you something here. You see, they, spoke, they, they all spoke the same thing. That's what I'm trying to show you. Like we read in 1 Corinthians 1, that you should all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. The only time when division will come in the marriage is when a third party is introduced, which is the serpent here. The serpent is introduced here. And the serpent went to Eve directly. Why? Because the serpent couldn't go to Adam. Because Adam was going to what? Was going to check the serpent. Adam was going to check the spirit of the white man. He was going to do that. Because Adam understood all things. So now, that's why he went to the weaker vessel. You understand? But they all spoke the same thing. At this point, she's glorifying her husband. You understand? Because she's showing that she learned from her husband Guess what? At this point, Eve was still in her right mind. Watch this. 
Give me that in Sarah 26, verse 13. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 26, verse 13. Read that. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The grace of a wife delighted her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. So now she's explaining, it says, you see what it says, and her discretion will fatten his bones. The, the Eve is, uh, is explained to the woman, said, listen, God said we must not deal with this. We can deal with that, that and the other, but when this right here, we're not going to deal with that. So she's repeating the same things that Adam taught her. You understand? Read on. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see, there is a, a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. And there is no, there is, he says, there is nothing so much worth as a mind that is well instructed. You understand? Eve was well instructed because she was able to repeat the things that Adam said to Adam taught him. You understand? She was still in her right mind at this point a little bit. Go ahead. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace. Mm -hmm. And her continent mind cannot be valued. A continent mind. Continent means what? Meaning what? Disciplined. Her disciplined mind cannot be valued. Meaning you cannot put a prize on a sister like that. Sisters like that are hard to come by. Oh my God, they are hard to come by. Brothers, understand that thing. So now what's going on here is that um, Eve's mind was still well instructed at this point until the serpent entered the scene. You understand? She gave place to the devil. That's what she did. She gave place to the devil. But what I'm trying to show you is that when, when you're, because especially because notice, when, when you read Genesis 3, right, you see that this is the serpent is trying you understand? He's trying to deceive Eve. So it's a process. It wasn't like boom, like that. No, it's a process. You understand? It's a process. Oh, you keep the commandments? Okay, you keep the commandments, you address. You're not supposed to deal with no man and so forth. Yes, I'm an Israelite. I keep the laws. Come to the school. Okay, no, sister, maybe next time. But guess what? You're still talking to the wicked Negro. Over time, guess what you're going to happen? That wicked Negro will run game on you. Before you know it, you're on your back and your legs are open. That's exactly what happened to Eve. She didn't exactly do that, but she, what, she followed the philosophies that came with the serpent. That's my point. You understand? That's what happened. Okay, watch this. Now, give me... Hold on a second. Hmm. Now, what, what, I'm, what I'm showing you, brothers, is that before you can think of even saying, okay, I want a wife, you must understand, are you fit to be a husband? These are the responsibilities that was, our husband must do. A husband must set his house in order. You understand? That's the job of a husband. You get married and so forth. Your job is to teach your wife. Your job is to instruct your wife. Your job is to make sure that her mind is after your mind. That's not an easy job. That's not a small task. It is not an overnight thing. It takes time and patience and what? Dedication and discipline. You have to be persistent. You have to be stubborn for this. You understand? So guess what? What we're reading here is the Lord is showing us steps to marriage right here. That listen, before you can even think of a sister, you must first examine if you are a man in the sight of the Lord. Then the next realm is that if you want a wife, guess what? You must think, okay, am I good enough to be a husband? Because these are the things that a husband will do. A husband will set his house in order. Because Adam had going on. He had a wisdom. He had a job. You understand? He had a place to stay. He had everything going on for him. Okay? So you have to also follow the same footsteps that our forefathers before you did. Don't be rushing to say, I want a woman, but you, you cannot get your mind right. You are failing to apply basic scriptures to your life. You understand? To get rid of those demons that you'll be walking around with, feeding them on a daily basis. Okay? Watch this. The next level is what? The next level is you have, you, now you're a husband. You've got a wife. Guess what your job is now? Now you're thinking of what? You're thinking father. 
mother. Because you, now that you are a husband, sooner or later, you'll be a father. So you need to know how to now to be a good father. You need to seek counsel on that. You understand? You need to seek counsel on how to be a good father and how to make sure that this woman is a good mother. Who's responsible to teach it? It's you. You're responsible to do that. You understand? So there's a whole lot of levels to this because not only are you teaching her to be a wife, but you're also making sure that you are a good husband. You're handling your business according to the most High God. And now you're going to, what? You need to be a good father to the kids that you'll have. That's not a small task, okay? And you're going to have, that you're not going to have, all your kids are not going to be the same. They're, all of them are going to move differently, but you have to enforce the laws of God in their minds. You're going to have the rebellious ones, which you must want, beat that behind. But my point is, it's not a small job. It's not a small task. Okay? What else? Give me the book of Genesis 4. Okay? Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 4 verse 1. These are the things that must enter your mind. Okay? There's, the same goes for the sisters as well. You are thinking of a man, you must ask, are you a good woman? You think of, of, of a Lord, you understand? You must, will I make a good wife? Will I make a good mother? You need to think about those things. Will you be, will, will you be a reputable, you, will you have a good, a good name in Islam as a sister? You need, to have, you need to ask yourself those questions. The only way for you to have answers to those questions, you have to seek out. If you don't, shame on you. Okay, read that. Genesis 4 verse 1. Watch this. Come on. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Read. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Mm -hmm. And she conceived and bare Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So now Adam knew Eve is because eventually you're going to have kids because you have to deal with your wife. Sexually. You know, then children will come. Now they get, they're having children now. You understand? So now fatherhood has entered, they, they enter, Adam has entered the realm of fatherhood. So did, so has Eve has entered the realm of motherhood now. You understand? Read on. And she again be his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. You see what it's saying? And it says, she again be his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to pause there just for a second. Yes, this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 33, verse 27. Okay. Verse 2 is very important because as a father, that's the first, that's, uh, that's the first thing that you need to now start to do. You need to do this right here. Okay. Watch this. So that's 33, verse 27. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 27. Send him to labor, that he be not idle, for right. idleness teacheth much evil. Because Adam and Eve understood that. Because they were what? They were of one mind, same spirit, same judgment. They all spoke the same thing. So you see that? It says, send him to labor, that he be not idle, because idleness teacheth much evil. So that's what we're reading here. You see that in Genesis 4? Go back to Genesis 4 verse 2. Because what did they do? They gave them trolls. They kept them busy. They gave them responsibilities. You understand? Okay, read. Genesis chapter 4 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a teller of the ground. So now what's going on here is that they send, they make sure that they what they send them to labor that they be not idle. Give me that in Sirach 724. Sirach 723, 23, 23. Sirach 7, verse 23. Let's read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. Go ahead. Hast thou children? Instruct them and mm -hmm. bow down their neck from their youth. That's what Adam and Eve did. So Adam had to set his house in order now as a father. You understand? He had to set his house in order as a father and instruct his children. And to also teach Eve how to deal with the sons that they have, Cain and Abel. So that's the job and responsibility of a father to teach the kid, the children. You understand? Read that again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. Read. Hast thou children? 
instruct them and mm. bow down their neck from their youth. He says, as thou children instruct them. Okay. Give me that in Romans 2. Do you have children? Instruct these children that you've got. Okay. Read that. Romans, Romans 2, verse 18. 2 verse 18. Come on. And knows his will and approves the things that are more excellent. Being instructed out of the law. So Cain and Abel were instructed out of the laws of God. That's why they were given chores and responsibility. So they can be held accountable when they do not do, when they don't take care of their responsibilities. So that they can be held accountable. They were given tasks to do. That's why when you come into the board, we keep you busy. You understand? Some of you are slothful, slothful as hell. you slacking and so forth. You understand? We have to be chasing you around all the time. You understand? Just simple as hell. Okay. That's another topic. Read that again. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Read. And knows his will. Mm -hmm. And approves the things that are more excellent. Come being on. instructed out of the law. Being instructed out of the laws of God. Because that's what Adam and Eve did. And Adam made sure that his house was in order. He educated his children. That's what he did. And Eve was in agreement with that. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in um, Sirach chapter 30 and verse 3. Ecclesiastical chapter 30 verse 3. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 3. Mm -hmm. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. Mm. And before his friends he shall rejoice of him. You see that thing? It says, he that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. Because what did Adam do? Adam taught his sons, Cain and Abel. He taught them. You understand? He taught them. The proof of that, he gave, go back to Genesis now. Genesis 4. Read Genesis 4 verse 3. Genesis 4 verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So now what's happening here in verse 2, they were given chores. Verse 3, now they are given responsibility on how to handle problems in their life. You understand? So here in verse 3, Adam and Eve is teaching their sons on how to deal with issues when they arrive in their life. When they, Whatever you're dealing with issues, this is what you must do. Read verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So now what's happening here is that this offering, we know these offerings was for the atonement of sins. You understand? The proof of that, Genesis 3.21, because Adam and Eve, they, what? They, they, after they sinned, the Lord introduced the law of animal sacrifice. And guess what Adam and Eve did? They taught the kids. That's what we're reading in Genesis 4 verse 3. Read Genesis 3.21 now. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Go ahead. Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them? Because this is after Adam and Eve had sinned. He made coats of skin and clothed them. The coats of skin comes from the animals. Because what? This is when the, the law of animal sacrifice was introduced. And guess what? Genesis 4 verse 3 now. They taught the same to the parents. I mean, they taught the same to the kids. Why? Because now when you mess up, this is how you recover from your mess ups. Okay, read that. Genesis 4 verse 3. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. Go ahead. And in process of time, it came to pass mm. that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Okay, an offering unto the Lord. Go ahead. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Mm -hmm. And Cain was very wroth. And his countenance fell. Because in verse 3, he didn't follow the command. He failed to follow the instruction. Okay? Because in order for you to get atonement for your sins, you're not supposed to be bringing, bringing fruits and veggies. Where is the blood going to come from? You understand? Read, read on. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And mm -hmm. why is thy countenance fallen? Why are you mad? Why are you angry? Because I gave you a command and you did not do it. Now when I'm checking you, you're getting upset. 
such as some of you, brothers and sisters, too. You are given something to do, and when you don't do it, you get checked, you get upset. You see that? That's a simp move. That's the behavior of a simp. That's childlike behavior. Okay, go ahead. If thou do as well, shalt thou mm -hmm. not be accepted? If you do what I tell you, are you not going to be received? You know? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Come on. And unto thee shall be his desire, mm -hmm. and thou shalt rule over him. Meaning, Cain's desire will be to what? To worship the devil. Okay. But what I'm showing you here is that Cain was very self willed. You understand? He was self willed. He was presumptuous. He was chacharach, disrespectful. Okay. Watch this. Give me Sarah 30, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 8. So, as a father, this is what Adam had to deal with. You understand? He had to deal with a, with a rebellious son. He had to deal with a rebellious child. You understand? A child that is out of order and disrespectful. Read that. Surak 30. Okay, verse 8. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 8. Read. And host not broken becometh headstrong. Mm -hmm. And a child left to himself will be willful. That's exactly how Cain was. Cain was willful. Cain was willful. Even though he was given things to do, he decided to do his own thing. You understand? So he had, he had a what? A willful spirit. He hated instruction. Okay? Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. Give him no liberty in his youth mm -hmm. and wink not at his follies. You see what he's saying? Don't give him liberty in his youth because Adam and Eve did not give Cain liberty in his youth. They, that's why in verse 2 it says they were given responsibility. Abel was his job was to deal with the with the with the sheep, and Cain's job was to was to be a tiller of the ground. So they were given responsibility and accountability when they don't do what they're supposed to. But Cain, he was willful. You understand? And guess what? He had too much liberty. What I what do I mean by that? He was given chores, but he chose to do his own thing, his own way. Such is some of you. I mean, that's a shameless character to have. You cannot have some such a character like that you call yourself in Israel. Like, no, 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 no. You are not. Okay. Jump down to verse 13. Read verse 13. Come on. Verse 13. Read. Chastise thy son mm -hmm. and hold him to labor. Go ahead. Lest his lewd behavior become be an offense unto thee. You see, let his lewd behavior, his disrespectful behavior be an offense unto thee. You understand? And that's, that, these are things that we deal with on a daily basis in Israel. Let alone our people in the world that don't know this truth. But in Israel, this is the stuff that we have to deal with on a day. You understand? Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon. You understand? You know what? That's it from there. Go back. Um, go back to Genesis 4. Go back to Genesis. Read Genesis chapter 4 now, verse 4. Genesis 4, verse 4. Because you're not going to have the same kids. That's why brothers and sisters walk in. You, I can, I can tell you, spirit. That's that brother spirit is like this. That brother spirit, like that sister spirit, is like that. So now, when I deal with you, I have to deal with you according to that spirit. Be, be, be it rebellious or not. If it's rebellious, yes, definitely you're gonna be put on blast every single time. If you're rebellious, but if you really want to learn, you will really learn and you will grow. The choice is yours. Read what you got. Genesis 4, verse 4. Come on. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Read. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock mm -hmm. and of the fat thereof. Go ahead. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see what? Our forefather Abel, he had what he did what he was supposed to. He obeyed his father and mother. You understand? It says, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Not only did he respect um, his offering, but he, he respected Abel as well. Because of what? Because Abel was obedient. Okay? Give me that in, um, give me that in Sarah, chapter 3, verse 8. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and verse 8. I'm going to show you the differences between Cain and Abel. Okay? And guess what? When you have kids, that's exactly what you're going to deal with. You're going to deal with, you can see their spirits from their, from their youth up. You can tell, hmm, this one, this one, she's the devil, this one. 
you can tell. Okay, likewise, you brothers, when you're coming in, the, when you start to unravel, we can tell. Mm, that one right there, we're going to have problems with this brother right here. Give me Sarah chapter 3, verse 8. Read them. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 8. Mm. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed. Go ahead. And a blessing may come upon thee from them. Mm -hmm. Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 8. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. That's exactly what our forefather Abel did. He honored his father and mother, you understand? And he received blessings. Go ahead. For the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of children, mm. but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. That's exactly. You see, he, uh, Cain, he was cast from the from the face of the ground. He was cast from the face of God because he hated his brother. So not only did Adam and Eve, Adam as a father and Eve as a mother had to deal with um, Cain's disobedience, they also had to deal with what sibling rivalry because Cain hated his brother because of what he envied his brother because his own works was evil. You can make this stuff up. Guess what? In the camp, you will be having, you're dealing with brothers that have spirits like that, but they don't apply. Just like Cain did not want to apply himself, he decided instead of applying me, me, me instead of applying myself, I'm going to hate my brother instead. I'm going to have hatred for my brother in my heart. You understand that? The spirit of Cain, okay? So Adam had to deal with those type of traits when he has to now had to be a father to these kids. Teach them the laws and one will go off Another one will go walk the straight and narrow. That's the same thing today. So these are the things that you're going to have to face and deal with. You understand? In this walk, as a man, as a sister. Okay? Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 9. Great. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children. Mm. But the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. Give me that in Sarak 3 now. Sarak 3 verse 1. We're going to read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. Hear me, your father, O children, mm -hmm. and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Because the only way you are going to be safe, you're going to, meaning what? You're going to live long on the earth, like it says in Exodus 20 verse 12. It says what? You must listen to your father because you are a child. That you what? You may be safe. A lot of you, you are given instructions. You don't want to follow the instructions because in your head, he says, you're not going to tell me what to do. You're not my father. You dumb as hell. I'm going to tell you straight. Because some of you, you didn't, you grew up without fathers. So now when you come in Israel, I talk to you like a man, you get upset. Just fix your face, get your spirit correct and apply these laws. Sisters as well, you understand? You had fathers in the world. You come in Israel. Guess what? When now you have to be corrected according to the scriptures, it shows that you never respected your father. Yeah. These are things I'm seeing. You understand? Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Go ahead. Hear me, your father, O children, mm -hmm. and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Come on. For the Lord hath given the father own honor over the children. Come on. And hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. You see that? The Lord has given the father honor over the children. So the father is the one that makes sure that the children, they what they learn and how they learn and what is their rate of learning? What is their struggles while they are learning? How does this child learn? How, what is their head learning style? What is his learning style and so forth? The father must know those things. And the father is the one that sets the order in the house. Adam had to deal with that. You understand? Okay, it says what? And has confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Because who does that? The father does that. The father will make sure that the mother, she knows how to what, how to teach her children. The, the job of a father is to make sure so that she can learn how to be a good mother. Where is she going to learn that from? She's going to learn that from her husband. So Eve had to learn how to be a woman, how to be a wife, how to be a mother from Adam. I need you men to understand that thing. 
So now as they as we start to grow and grow, now we start to have older sisters and so forth. They are the ones that are going to teach these young ones, like you read in Titus 2, verse 3 now. But where did the older, where did the where did the older ones, where do they learn this stuff from? They learn from their husbands. They learn from their fathers. You understand? The leadership. Okay. That's what the Lord is trying to show us. But a lot of us, we don't, our minds is closed. We don't really see what's going on. Okay. Watch this. Now go back to Genesis 2 now. Give me Genesis 2, verse 24. Watch this. You know what? Before you get me that, give me Sarah 24, verse 1. Sarah 24 and 1. Read them. Ecclesiastes chapter 24, verse 1. Come on. Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. Wisdom, wisdom will praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. The wisdom of the Lord will praise herself because guess what? The prophets will bring it out. The children of Israel, we will apply God's commandments and that's how wisdom will praise herself among us, the congregation of the Lord. Jump down to verse 33 now. Come on. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy. Come on. And leave it to all ages forever. Now that's heavy right there. He says, I will pour out I will yet pour out, yet, meaning I'm still going to continue to do that, the Lord says. And it says, I will pour, I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Meaning generation after generation, the Lord says, I'm going to give you that wisdom from the days of old, from the time of Adam. I'm gonna still going to give it unto this day, even beyond us. The Lord says, I'm going to give you this wisdom. Through, yeah, that, will, that, will, what, that will live through all ages forever. Watch this. Now, the proof of that, keep reading, actually. Read verse 34, watch this. Verse 34. Come on. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, mm. but for all them that seek wisdom. So now, Adam didn't labor for himself only. He labored for himself, not only that, but he labored so that he can be able to teach his wife, that he can be able to teach his sons now that they have a family. You see that thing? So now... As a man, you thinking a woman, guess what? You must see if you are fit to be one. Secondly, you thinking wife, you must see if you are fit to be a husband. Thirdly, now that you are a husband, are you going to be fit to be a father? Now that you are a father, guess what you are doing now? The two of you, you are doing what? Nation building. That's what you're doing. Nation building, you see, if there's steps to get to that. With the, by the time you get to nation building, listen, your leadership skills have progressed by the time you get to nation building. Because now the building of your nation begins and begins with you and begins in your house when you get married, begins with your children when you have kids after you've gotten married. That's the beginning of your nation, the nation of Israel being built with the spirit of the Lord this day. Understand that thing, okay? Watch this. Now, give me Genesis 2.24. Genesis 2, verse 24. We need to understand this thing because it says this wisdom will what will what will, is going to be left for us to for all ages forever. Okay? Read Genesis 2, 24. Watch what Adam is doing right here. He's going to pour out doctrine as prophecy. Listen to what he says. Read. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother Come and on. shall cleave unto his wife and they mm. shall be one flesh. So now Adam is teaching us, listen, going forward, this, are, this is how marriages are going to be. So Adam is not speaking out of his, he's just not pulling, you know, he's not pulling something out of his head. No, he's speaking from experience now. Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes. Mm. Adam is speaking from experience, okay? He's not just saying things. He understands what he, he knows exactly what he's talking about, okay? Because he's been through that. Now we can be able to declare how marriage is going to look like. Excuse me. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 1, okay? Ecclesiastes 1, verse 16. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to a great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Yea. My heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. 
You see what he's saying? He says, yea, my heart, meaning my mind, had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. So Adam, he had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. So, I mean, this is King Solomon, the wisest man that walked the earth during his time. So now imagine how Adam was. Adam was on another level. You understand? So he had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. You understand? Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 8. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 8. Go ahead. If a man desire much experience, mm -hmm. she knows things of old. Stop and right there. It says, if a man desire much experience, the she here is wisdom. It says, she knows things of old. The wisdom knows things of old, meaning what? The things of the past. So Adam, the reason why he's prophesying in Genesis 2, 24, because he has what great, great experience of wisdom and knowledge. That's why he's able to prophesy how many future marriages must look like and how they must be conducted. Go ahead. And conjectureth aright what is to come. You see that that's prophecy. So it says wisdom knoweth the things of old. So if you desire much experience, you will what you will keep wisdom close unto you. Because wisdom knows the things of old, will give you experience. And it says, will conjecture aright what is to come. Prophecies. That's why we read in Sarah 2433. Go ahead. And she knoweth the subtleties of speeches. Mm -hmm. And can expound dark sentences. Go ahead. He foreseeth signs and wonders mm. and the events of seasons and times. Because Adam understood. He says, What she knoweth the subtleties of speeches and can expound dark sentences. She foreseeth signs and wonders and events of seasons and times. That's why Adam was able to prophesy how marriage is going to look like because of what? How, how the experience that he has with his marriage. Because Adam had great experience of marriage because he was in one. He understood that thing. That's why he was able to prophesy how future marriages must look like. That's why go back to Genesis 2.24 because Adam is prophesying some heavy stuff right here. Okay? Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and mm -hmm. shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. He said, you see what? He says, then shall a man leave father and mother. So in order for you to leave father and mother, that means you must get your own place. You must have a job. You understand? You must be able to take care of yourself, must be able to take care of your nation. So there's a lot of steps involved in that. Did Adam have that? Yes, he did that. He had wisdom, he had a job, he had a place to stay, he had responsibilities. You understand? So likewise, he's telling you in the future, this is how all marriages must look like now, going forward. Watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 30, verse 30. I'm going to give an example with our forefather, Jake. Okay. Genesis chapter 30 and verse 30. Read that. Genesis chapter 30, verse 30. Right. For it was little which thou, is, which thou has before I came. Mm -hmm. And it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my time. And now, when shall I provide for mine own house also? You see what he's saying? He says, listen, he's talking to his uncle Laban. He says, listen, he says what? It was little, thou, it was little for it was little which thou has before I came. And now is increased unto a multitude. So, the blessings that Laban was receiving was because of Jacob's presence at Laban's. It says, and the Lord had blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for mine own house also? You see where his mindset is? Because now he understood what Adam was saying. This is the prophecy of what Adam is saying coming to pass here. That's what we're reading here. You understand? He, our forefather Jacob understood this. Based on what our forefather Adam did, he understood that thing. To take care of his own house now. That's why you have to leave your father and mother 
and leave to your wife. That means you have a place, you have an income, you can take care of yourself and your wife to be, you know, and your wife, you understand, and you'll take care of your nation. That's what Adam is saying. That's what he's teaching us right there in the spirit of Christ. Now watch this. Hmm. Let's go back. Okay. Hmm. Let me see if I want. Watch this. Give me Sarah 49, 16. Let's circle back. Let's circle back a little bit. Watch this. Sarah 49, verse 16. Okay. Because the future marriages were going to Adam's, Adam's marriage was the blueprint of all future marriages in terms of what? Him getting wisdom, him having a place to stay, him getting a job, him being able to take care of business, him, you know, owning things, having wealth and so forth. So he was able to what? To begin a possession because he already, he had already have, he already had all, he met all the requirements. You understand? Now it was time to what? To build a possession when it comes to this woman, building a family. You understand? Teaching the kids, building a nation. That's a possession right there, okay? On, over and above the things that he received before Eve came, okay? Read that. Sarah 49, verse 16. Let's circle back. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 49, verse 16. Go ahead. Adam and Seth were in great honor among men. Mm. And so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. So now you notice here the way that Sarah is writing this, he is writing the names backwards in terms of lineage. He's saying Sam and Seth were in great honor among men and so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. Because when you look at it from Adam, it's Adam, Seth, and then you've got Shem down the line. You understand? Out of Shem, you understand? You have the lineage that God chose. So obviously Noah, then he gets Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the Lord chose Shem. Out of Shem, there are specific sons that the Lord chose out of Shem. Give me that in First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 24. Okay, I'm going to show you how future marriages were going to look like. Watch this. First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 24. Come on. First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 24. Go ahead. Shem, Afrak said, Shila. So now these are the people that comes out of Shem. Shem, Afrak said, Shila. These are the chosen sons. Okay, go ahead. Eber, Peleg, Reu. Red. Sarug, Nahor, Terah. Come on. This is Abraham's father. Go ahead. Abram, the same as Abraham. Mm -hmm. The Abram, sons of Abraham. Is, hold on. Abram, the same is Abraham. Okay. Watch this. Jump down to verse 34. Verse 34. Mm hmm. And Abraham begat Isaac, the sons of Isaac, Esau, and Israel. So now you see the people there, the sons, the seed line that God chose. This is the chosen seed line. Yeah. So now I'm taking you, I'm taking you from Aram. I'm jumping generations. I'm fast forwarding to Abraham now. You understand? I'm fast forwarding to Abraham because our forefather Abraham, he was a great father. You understand? And the footsteps that he, he followed, the Aram's footsteps. He was not doing his own thing. He was following Noah's footsteps. He wasn't doing his own thing. He was following Shem's footsteps. He was following Seth's footsteps. Enoch's footsteps. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarak, okay? Give me Sarak 44. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 19. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 19. Go ahead. Abraham was a great father of many people. Mm -hmm. In glory was there none like unto him. Come on. Who kept the law of the Most High and Wait. was in covenant with him. He established a covenant in his flesh. Mm -hmm. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. When he was proved, when he was quote unquote uh, commanded to go and sacrifice his son. So he says, when he was proved, he was found faithful. So our forefather Abraham he says he was a great father of many people. So a lot of the times in the Christian church, they use this to say he's a father of everybody comes from Abraham. That's not in the Bible, okay? If all the nations on earth did not come from Abraham, that's what you need to understand, okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 18, okay? 
Give me Genesis 18, verse 18. I'm going to show you the footsteps of our forefather Abraham. He followed the footsteps of those that came before him. Okay, Genesis 18, verse 18. Read that. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Go ahead. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So now all the nations of the earth will be blessed in Abraham. So that's the same thing that we read in Sarah 44, verse 19 and 20. You understand? The nations of the earth that will be blessed in Abraham is not talking about all nations on earth. He's not talking about that. Give me that in Genesis 35, verse 10 and 11. Genesis chapter 35, verse 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. Right. And he called his name Israel. Mm -hmm. Come on. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Mm -hmm. And kings shall come out of thy loins. And kings will come out of thy loins, Jacob. So this blessing that has been bestowed upon Jacob is the same blessing that was bestowed upon who? Isaac and our forefather Abraham. Next verse. Go ahead. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee will I give it, and mm -hmm. to thy seed after thee will I give the land. Thy seed after thee. So the seeds that came out of Jacob is who? The 12 tribes. You understand? Get that in Genesis 26, verse 1 through 3. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. Go ahead. And there was a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Go ahead. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Go ahead. So journey in this land, and I will be with thee. And will mm. bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform all the oath which I swear, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. So now you see he's talking to Isaac. So the children that Abraham had was uh, was who was Isaac and Ishmael, but he's not bestowing the blessing upon Ishmael. He's bestowing the blessing upon Isaac. And the children that came out of Isaac was who? Jacob and Esau. The Lord chose Jacob, like we read in Genesis 35, verse 10, and through verse 12. So all the nations that will be blessed in Abraham is not talking about all nations on earth. Go back to Genesis now, 18, read verse 19. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So now what you notice here, the Lord says for him, he says, because I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. So our, our forefather Abraham was not a simp, okay? He was an alpha male. Our forefather Abraham was not a simp. He was a good father, you understand? And he was a good husband. Understand that thing. Read again verse 19, come on. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which, he, that which he had spoken of him. So our forefather Abraham ruled his house. Our forefather Abraham commanded his house. He commanded his children and he commanded his household. That goes into his wife and the servants of his house. You understand? Everybody obeyed the command of Abraham. Everybody. Why? Because our forefather Abraham was an alpha male. He was not a simple. 
So this is this this is a good example for us to follow because he wasn't doing his own thing. He was following the examples of his forefathers that came before him. So likewise, this day we must do the same things. So gone are them days where you think of a sister, you're already thinking sex. You're, you're thinking, no, 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 you know, she's got an hourglass and so forth. You simple as hell. You're already thinking sex, sex, sex. Listen, that thing is not going to last. You understand? After three to six months, that sensation is gone. You're no longer killing your toes no more and so forth. Now, all you have now is what? Conversation. Not only that, but are you a good husband? Is she a good wife? Is she a good woman? Will she be a good mother? Is she going to be able to be by my side? 100%, will she be able to, her mind will be after my mind, and so she can help me build the nation of Israel, teach my children when I go to war, is she going to be able to support me, she's not going to open a big black mouth, be all up in my face, these are the things that you need to ask yourself, and the only way for you to know those things, you have to make sure that you understand the scriptures and you apply, you understand that you mirror what the Bible says and you are doing it, the sisters must do the same things. You have to make sure that he's not going to be a lazy bum. You understand? He's not going to be slothful. He's not going to be moving up in the ranks in the camp. He's always sitting down. He's always a brother. How come he's not getting any rank? What's going on? He's been here for two, three years. What, what's going on? How come he's not moving up in the rank? Something going on. Okay? That means he don't believe the mission. So you better stay away from that brother for a while until he gets his mind right. These are things that you need to look out for, okay? You sisters, okay? Read that in Sirach 6 verse 7, just to prove what I'm saying. Read that, Sirach 6 and 7. Because I want to go somewhere else real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 7. Go ahead. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, mm -hmm. and be not hasty to credit him. You see what the Bible is saying? That's how you make sure that you're not getting a simp for a wife or a simp for a, or a bum for a husband. You just be looking at how, how good he looks on the outside. You understand? He looks like a tripod when he's standing. Listen, let, those things are not going to last. Those are carnal things. They are not going to last. You're looking at she's got curves and so forth. She's got a big chest. That's what you're thinking about. Listen. That's not going to last. All she will know, she's how to make it clap. You understand? And she will be all up in your face. She will not respect or obey you or reverence you or respect you. Submit herself to you. Those are the, those, those, those things. Those are the things that make a man to be attracted to a sister. Because a sister, she's got a meek and a quiet spirit. She's not all up in a man's face. Okay? Now watch this. Give me that in Sarah 19 verse 4. Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 4. Mm -hmm. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. Mm. And he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. You see what the Bible is saying? Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 4. Mm -hmm. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. Come on. And he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. So now if you are too quick to give credit, it says what? It says, you are simple, you are dumb, you are stupid. Okay? It says, he that sinneth shall offend against his own. What is the sin? You are too hasty to give credit. Sirach 11, verse 2. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 2. Go ahead. Command not a man, commend not a man for his beauty, mm -hmm. neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. You see that? Don't just be looking at the outside. Because that's, that's not the first thing that Aram received. Aram received wisdom. That was the main important thing, first and foremost. Because a man will be commended for his wisdom, not for his looks. So if in the world, that's how you used to pick, based on how they look and all that, but you don't really get to speak to them so they open their mouth, guess what? You're just going to lay with them. Why? Because they look good on the outside. But inwardly, they are they are full of what they are full of deceit they are full of bs okay so you sisters don't be don't be fooled you brothers as well don't be fooled by fooled by these sisters that will flatter you with the time don't be simple up in here okay now that's another topic watch this 
Go back to Genesis. Get, get, go back to um, Genesis 18, verse 19. I just wanted to bring that up so we understand. Genesis 18, verse 19. Read that. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will <clears throat> command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that, with he, that which he had spoken of him. So now it says he will command his children. So Abraham, did he command his children? Yes, he did. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis, Genesis 21. Read Genesis chapter 21, verse 8. Yeah, Genesis 21, verse 8. That's what I want right there. Watch this. This scripture right here, what we're about to read is twofold. Watch this. Genesis 21, verse 8. Genesis chapter 21, verse 8. Go ahead. And the child grew and was mm -hmm. weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So now it says, and the child grew and was weaned, meaning what? Now he's no longer sucking on his mother's breast. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Now, we know you can read about that in 2 Maccabees 7, but here's what I want to show you here. It says, and the child grew and was weaned. So, the child, the child, in order for the child to grow, what do the child need? They need milk, right? Yeah, the child grew and was weaned. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 28 real quick. Isaiah 28 verse 9. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom mm. shall he make to understand doctrine. Come on. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. So he says, whom shall the most high God teach his knowledge? Whom shall the Lord make to understand his doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. So the knowledge and the doctrine is to, goes into God's commandments. So Abraham, of course, he taught his children, including Isaac. Because Ishmael was one. But Isaac was taught as well, was taught the commandments of the Lord. He was made to understand God's knowledge and God's doctrine. Abraham taught his children. He commanded his children according to the laws of God. He was not a simp. He commanded them. He didn't ask them. He didn't beg them. He didn't say, come on, little no, no. None of that went down. Okay. That's why our forefather Isaac was the way that he was. He was a man of wisdom. Our forefather Jacob, our father Jacob, he was a man of wisdom. Why? Because of Abraham. Our forefather Abraham, you understand? That one. Watch this. Now, go back to Genesis 18. Read verse 19 again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Stop right there. He says he will command his children, that's what we read, and his household after him. His household goes into his wife and the servants in the house. Watch this. Give me First Peter 3, verse 5. Because our foremother, Sarah, she was a holy sister. You understand? She was a holy foremother. She reverenced her husband. Okay? First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Read. Really? For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, mm -hmm. being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see that? It says, it says after, for after this manner in the old time, he's taking you back to Genesis now. The holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Meaning the way they carried themselves, the way they conducted themselves, even their dress code was to what was to show reverence to their husbands. You understand? It says they were in subjection unto their own husbands. Go ahead. Verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. What did she do? 
even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. So our foremother Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham. Go ahead. Calling him Lord. Calling him what? Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. She reverenced her husband. She had disrespect for our forefather Abraham because Abraham commanded his house and his household after him to teach the way of the Lord his God. Go ahead. Calling him Lord. Mm -hmm. Whose daughters ye are. Come on. As long as ye do well mm -hmm. and are not afraid with any amazement. He says, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. As long as you do well. Well, according to what? You do well according to the scriptures. That's why a lot of the time, sisters, when we bring things out, a lot of you, you twitch like robots. Why? Because you don't want to do well. That's why you're always afraid with amazement. You're always shocked all the time. You understand? How do I have to do that? Yes, sister, you got to do that. Get your mind right, sister. Why? Because this is, our, this is the example our foremothers set behind. These are the examples that our foremothers left behind for you, sisters. And at the command of a man, a leader in the house, our forefather Abraham. So likewise, you brothers, you must have the same mindset. But it takes time and patience for you to ascend into the mindset of our forefathers, Abraham. It's not a walk in the park. You understand? In order, if you're looking for your Sarah, you must be that Abraham. And for you to be Abraham, oh gosh, you need to what? You need to be in this book. You can't be fake. You can't be phony. You understand? You can't be faking the funk up in here. You must keep it 100 as the scripture says to do. You understand? Now go back to Sarah 44, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 44. Uh, read verse 21. Because our forefather Abraham, he followed the footsteps of our forefathers behind before him. Watch this. Sarah 44. The blessing that was bestowed upon Abraham, he bestowed it upon his seed, Isaac, and ultimately his grandson, Jacob, okay? And his great-grandsons, which is the 12 tribes. Sarak, okay, chapter 44, verse 21. Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 21. Go ahead. Therefore, he assured him by an oath mm -hmm. that he would bless the nations in his seed. Right. And that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and do what and, and exalt his seed as the stars and exalt and exalt and exalt his seed meaning set on high his children as the stars go ahead and exalt his seed as the stars and mm. call to inherit from seed to seed well and from the river unto the utmost part of the land so now this is going into what the land of Israel, if you read Deuteronomy 11, 21 down. Go ahead. With Isaac, did he establish likewise? Meaning the same blessing that was given to our forefather Abraham was bestowed upon our forefather, grandfather Isaac. Go ahead. For Abraham, his, his father's sake. Read. The blessing of all men and the mm -hmm. covenant. Come on, the blessing of all men, the all men will be explained in the next verse. Come on. And made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Mm -hmm. He acknowledged him in his blessing Read. and gave him an heritage and divided his portions among the 12 tribes did he part them. So now the, 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 the blessing that was given to our forefather Abraham, to our grandfather uh, Isaac and to our father Jacob was what? was put upon the seed that came out of Jacob, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, which is us this day. So the same honor that they received is the same honor that will be passed down generations after generation, which is us today. So the only way, if you wanna see how honorable marriage is, this is how marriage becomes honorable. Why? Because the honor first comes in through what? The wisdom of the law. You will not be, we will not be honored as a nation without God's laws. We will not be honored as a nation without the wisdom of the Lord upon us. And it starts with what? It starts with the man, and then the woman, then the children, then the nation gets to what? Gets to receive the same honor, you understand? That was bestowed upon the fathers before us. That's what it means marriage is honorable. 
Then as a nation, we get to be exalted. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in um, Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. As a nation, we get to be exalted above all nations on earth. Why? Through wisdom. Okay. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Read that. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Go ahead. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Mm -hmm. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the reason why the Lord has chosen us to be a special people unto himself is not because of our good looks. It's not because we are strong. Mm -mm. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got everything to do with this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 19, verse 16. The only reason, 19, verse 6, the only reason why the most High God says we are a special people unto him is because of what he gave unto us. He gave unto our forefathers, which was passed down generations. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon 19, verse 6. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 6. Go ahead. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again anew, mm -hmm. serving, the, serving the peculiar commandments that were given unto them, Go ahead. that thy children might be kept without hurt. The whole creature is the whole creation, the 12 tribes of Israel in his proper kind. Because the Lord gave us laws. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7, 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. The most High God gave us laws to be upright, okay? In, the, in our proper kind. Watch this. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, mm -hmm. that God hath made man upright. You see that? But they... God has made, hold on. God has made man upright. The reason why what makes us upright is because of the upright laws that was given to us. That's what makes us special and separate and exclusive from all nations on earth. That's the only reason why we are special unto the Lord because of the laws that he gave unto us. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 19 verse 6. God's laws is what made us to be upright before all these nations on earth. Read what you got. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 6. Read. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again anew, mm -hmm. serving the peculiar commandments that were given unto them, that thy children might be kept without hurt. You see that? That our children may be kept without hurt. So when it says the whole creatures, that's the whole creation, the 12 tribes, like we read in Sirach 44, is as in his proper kind, because we, we're given the laws to be upright, was fashioned again anew to be born again, saving the peculiar commandments that was given unto them. That's what makes us special. That's what makes marriage honorable, because the only reason why the 12 tribes was even born on this earth was because of what marriage. Our fathers, Jacob and his wives, you understand, Leah and Rachel. That's the only reason why we are here on this earth, because of that marriage, because of the marriage of Adam and Eve, because of what, what the marriage of our forefather Abraham and our foremother Sarah. And they guess what? They govern those marriages by God's laws. That's why marriage is honorable. So it goes deeper than that. So it's not just you just having your wife and all that, having your little kids down. Mm -mm. It's bigger than just you and your wife and your kids. It's bigger than that. It's about the nation of Israel. Okay, it's about God's chosen people. Understand that thing. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy 7. Okay, Deuteronomy 7, verse 6 again. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Come on. Above all people. That are upon the face of the earth. Now give me Deuteronomy 14, verse 2. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Go ahead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord that chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Above all nations that are upon the earth. You see that thing? The most High God, he says, he's chosen us to be a peculiar people unto himself. What makes us peculiar? What makes us special? 
is the peculiar laws that he gave unto us to be holy and separate from all these nations on earth. And be with these laws, we are able to what? We are able to build, to build boys into men, girls into women. You understand? Men into what? Husbands. Husbands into what? Fathers. Women into wives and mothers. Then guess what? We are building the nation when we do that. Because now your children are going to learn from what? From the example of father and mother. Because they will grow up in the law. They will be taught God's commandments as they grow up. Now we've then we become honorable as a nation. Then that's when marriage becomes honorable because as a nation, we'll be doing what this Bible says. Marriage, which is the foundation of this strong nation called the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. All praise to the most high. Let's break bread. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. In the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it. In remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.